Hello, Gemini. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. I've been pulling a card from my uh, Wisdom of the Sacred Bee deck. And you, interestingly, have this tangible card, which has already come out in a different reading. But it's coming through very differently for you. Uh, the card, the visible underlying card, is the worker. And these two together are speaking of an excess of the mundane or of um, an excess of kind of mundane thinking. The card at the bottom of the deck is reverence. At first, when I, when I turned over your cards, I had this notion that this was going to be a relationship reading. But then after sitting with it for a little bit, I realized that it's not about that specifically. That may be part of it, but that what we're talking about here is re-enchantment. So we have this home away that's here. And it may be that you have this sense that this is how things are. Certainly they do seem uh, chaotic, right? Certainly the world seems chaotic. Um, the 24 hour news cycle exacerbates that, but it may also be that, that, that they're is a heightened level of chaos. It's a little hard to know. A friend of mine said that she thought that things seem to be happening faster, both in her own life as well as in the outside world. Um, and there is a lot of movement. You know, yesterday, I actually, in during my, my sort of morning personal reading, I asked my fellowship if they wanted to lay odds on the US election, who was gonna win. And you know what they gave me? They gave me the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> so, right, things are still moving. And it may feel that way to you. And the result of this is that you've been really focusing on practical matters, and you may have gotten your head into this practical materialist space of, it, you know, tending to your row, um, you know, dotting your I's, crossing your T's, uh, thinking of things in mechanical ways. And then there's this card, you know, that's here, <laughs> like waiting, you know, when will the ship land? When is this, right? Another friend of mine said to me, when is it going to stop? <laughs> and that's kind of here too, with the collector. Oh, and actually I'm just seeing the seven of pentacles. The card of, you know, are we there yet? Is it done? Has it ripened? Are we there? Why not? Um, certainly also a, a very practical card, the Seven of Pentacles. But below all of these cards I'm just seeing is the Knight of Cups. This completely different energy, right? Of the night and the moon and water and dreams and imagination. And it's below the night that we find the Ace of Pentacles. 
and actually, interestingly, a different um, ship, but one that looks, right, it's not, the waves are a little bit calmer, All right? There's nobody, right, in this card, there's a person sort of staring out at the waves, possibly in distress. The bottom of the deck has the five of wands. <laughs> and this one, you know, this one is uh, especially disturbing, right? Her whole head is blown off. And she's, um, I don't know if you've seen the movie Clue, but there's a scene where Madeline Kahn as Mrs. White is describing her rage and the flames, flames shooting around her head. This card always makes me think of that scene. Um, you know, and these, the, you know, this looks like the, also the beginning of the, you know, people with torches heading off to the castle. Um, the, the beginning of the mob scene that happens. But next to that is the Page of Pentacles. this student energy, a refocusing kind of energy. And that takes us to the path. And just, right, just saying that I can, I can feel, right, it's different. Talking about that five of wands and the mob is different. I'm in, I'm inspired to, to slow, to lower my pitch, to soften into the path. Then may timid wings awaken. And then the star. And the star too is, you know, she's standing among these waves. There is stuff going on around her. She's got this ship in her hair and there's, um, you know, these things flying around her head and, um, but then there's this bird, right, that has a flower. And there is a calm to this star, even though she's got this, right? There's this whale just <laughs> happening around her head. But she is calm. There's a sense of ease about her, even in the storm. And then we get the relic. And this Feels, always feels to me like a um, a new commitment. You know, it looks a bit like the Four of Wands scene, uh, like a hoopa, like, um, you know, an archway that a married couple might move through. She is in a white dress. Um, the bird is here again. So there is something you know, there's something about this commitment to the star that perhaps you have lost, that you've, you've become caught up, Gemini, in the happenings. Um, and it sort of makes me think of Abraham Hicks, but sometimes they talk about how we you know, we have all these things and we see it, we perceive it with our senses, and then we make it so meaningful. <laughs> right? That we attach so much weight to things that they in turn weigh us down. You know, and then we have this, and from the wordless oracle, this, right, this image 
of this wave coming in. And I see this card differently depending on the reading. And here it looks fatalistic, <laughs> right? I, you know, kind of, I've done things, but nothing I do seems to change anything. I'm just gonna stand here. I'm gonna get slammed by this wave. And this card and the card at the very bottom, which also feels a little chaotic today, like somebody, you know, sort of just moving um, frantically almost, or, uh, you know, that it's, um, you know, moving through mist, moving through cloud. And these cards are this gray sepia tone. But underneath them, both at top and bottom, at the top, we have this beautiful sun breaking through the clowns card. And then at the bottom, we have this really spectacular card. Just Right, if you live somewhere that has seasons, this is right, the perfect fall moment. You know, the beautiful color um, of the trees and the sunlight and, um, you know, you can feel that it might be, you know, just not too cool. And she's going down this road feeling exuberant in all of this beauty. And this is what lies beneath. What lies beneath. And that maybe, right, you've lost touch with it. That you've, right, you've gotten too invested. You've made what appears to be reality too tangible. And it's interesting to me, of course, that this card came out for you, Gemini. You're the airiest of the air, the mutable air. But I think you're actually very susceptible to, to this because of the intellect, right? It's the, it's the intellect, at least in the way that we practice it in the society, this very left side of the brain, very analytical, um, that takes things apart into pieces, that looks at things out of context, that, um, you know, that magnifies little parts of things. And that this can really spin you out. And then it can affect your body as well. We certainly see that. You know, anybody, anytime anybody's telling me that they have some sort of bodily thing going on, the first question I always want to ask is, well, what have you been thinking about? <laughs> you know, you're having heartburn. What have you been thinking about? What have you been watching? What's, what's happening? Right? These things we can't, you know, we talk about the mind body connection, but it, you know, it's almost redundant, right? The, the brain, the mind is part of the body. So then we continue, right? We have this, and this seems like first steps, first steps out of the structure, out of this walled city. into a more natural space. And then it gets more beautiful, right? Getting, getting in a, you know, moving even further away onto the water. Right, the, uh, this Knight of Cups energy, right? That's Pisces, your fellow mutable sign. Um, 
that you may have difficulty with. It sits square to you. And if you're watching this when I post it, we just had that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. We're going to have the sibling eclipse on October 2nd, Libra new moon. So there is, right, there's this opening for, I mean, it is about emotion, but more, right, it's more about consciousness, about imagination, about magic, about enchantment, about a particular view of how the world works. And then we get even more sort of enchanting here with this card because of this music down here. The way that, right, the way that music affects us. You know, science seeks to figure this out. Uh, we know, for example, that people who have cognitive deficits, people who are suffering from what we call dementia, will come back to us through music. People remember, even people who can't speak can sing. There's something about music. And science seeks to find it, right? To find the spot in the brain, right? Why are we able to remember music? Where is the spot? <laughs> but it's not about that. It's about something else. It's about magic and mystery and the interconnection of spirit and matter. Uh, I often say that I have a, a strong connection to Venus. She is the most dignified planet in my chart. She's my soul dispositor. Everything comes back to her. She is the guide for all the other planets, the, the organizing principle. And so her messages, I think, come through very often and strongly here. And I think, again, this is, this is a Venus kind of message. And also Jupiter, he's moving through Gemini. And Jupiter, too, can be magic and uh, speaks of how we see things, what our philosophy is, what our view. But even more tangibly than that, you know, what is actually, right, what, what, what is really there? You know, not beyond philosophy, which is, you know, kind of a mental exercise. But the understanding that there really is something else happening than what we can see and touch. And that is the Venus principle, right? Her symbol, the circle and the cross, the circle of spirit and the cross of matter, spirit and matter coming together. And so we have seduction. This, this way of seeing is calling to you. Um, I'm gonna start at the bottom of the deck. But there is, right, there's interference. Eight of Swords, right? There's all the mental static chatter, whatnot, that we get involved in. Um, this is, in fact, Jupiter and Gemini uh, in its association. And I think Jupiter moving through there is, how have you been caught? What is the interference? And next to that, we have the moon. Um, Right, the moon, the full moon, the association with Pisces, the mysterious, the lunatic, the 
weird, the unexplainable, the that which is beyond. Right, and that's the seduction, Venus and Scorpio. But below that, we have this sorrow. And it is, you know, it is a very mentally driven, mind thought, I should say, thought driven um, sorrow. The way that we may stab our own heart with our thoughts. And we don't do it because we mean to, we don't mean to stab ourselves in the heart. Uh, but we do. As a consequence of getting caught up in all of this stuff. And it's so easy because we live such mental lives. You know, even if we have stuff that we do, you know, we have a yoga practice or we knit or we, you know, do something. So much of our lives is so mental, intellectual, spent online for so many of us, you know, or in front of a computer, even if we're not online. It's not everybody, of course. There are people who uh, work with their bodies a lot. Um, but it's so easy to get caught up in that, right? And so we have the devil. <laughs> All the ways that we get caught up. And I'm going to move here. Actually, I'm going to skip the next card. And then we have this Knight of Discs, who today is looking... Um, you know, a little bit maybe skeptical or a little bit disappointed or a little bit disbelieving. Um, on the other side of him is this Four of Cups of Apathy. Right, this really in the world. This is your other fellow mutable sign, Virgo. And Virgo... Uh, shares your Mercury guide and can have some of these same tendencies of getting caught up in mental stuff, in being too reliant on mundane, tangible means and, you know, seeing, like believing everything that's happening in front of them. Now, between this Knight of Discs and the Devil, we have the root of the powers of Earth. And what I want to say is that the root of the powers of Earth, like everything else, like the root of all the other powers, is source, is universal consciousness. is something that is not bound by physical laws. I was sort of, <laughs> um, another thing, as, as usual, I saw a couple a thing this morning. There is a paper out uh, where a bunch of scientists using some AI and some other monitoring stuff, have discovered a correlation between other planetary relationships to Earth and earthquakes. <laughs> and I had to laugh for a long time because of course, if you ask any astrologer, you know, for the last 2000 years, is there a correlation between the planetary aspects and earthquakes, they would say, yes. <laughs> so I had the, you know, I had this urge to like, you know, write to these people and say, hey, you know, that's astrology. Um, and I shared it with a friend of mine who said, oh, well, someone must know, maybe they're trying to, you know, slip it into the mainstream this way. And I was also reminded then of a man named Jack Parsons who worked for NASA. He was a rocket 
engineer, and a Thelemite. Uh, Thelema was an occult practice and group that was, uh, I don't know if it was founded by or just influenced by Aleister Crowley. <laughs> so, right, there's, you know, even people who deal with what seems to be very, you know, tangible things like rocket science may you know, view things from this other perspective. That it is possible to do the two things at once. And so then we have the Eight of Pentacles, right? How do we do? And I was interested that this particular deck was chosen. Because it seemed to me that we were entering, right, we were entering into this re-enchantment idea and we, you know, we went from, you know, these cards, which are sort of a kind of a sepia gray thing going on, into the bees, which are very colorful. But then we come back to these very gray cards. And I think the point of them, both because this Eight of Pentacles includes a river, Yeah. Uh, also below this is the, you know, this six of wands, and then there's you, the knight of swords. That what this wants to say, and then the, the knight of cups at the very bottom of the deck, joined by the queen of wands. that the message here is that this re-enchantment can happen right where you are. That it is not necessary for you to like go off on a retreat or you know go and spend a week in nature without another person. That this re-enchantment can happen here now where you are. Because then we have a repeat of the Three of Swords. And the way I see this card, generally, is that, right, here you are. And what, all that's needed is for you to look up and see that there's this giant crack. So you've been living in this cave, but if you look up, you'll see that there's a way out. That you can leave this space that maybe you've been sitting in mentally. And what you get then is the magician. The magician temperance, um, you know, here fully in the water, in the waters of consciousness. And this temperance, more than being moderation or even alchemy, uh, feels like the angelic presence. that otherworldly energy that we find in these consciousness spaces. And then the Page of Cups. So I sort of see this as you, as you becoming re-enchanted. Like deciding for yourself that you want that you want to live in a world that is enchanted and magical and includes, you know, whatever sort of spirits and fairies and um, energies and beauty and amazingness that you want it to, that you're able to see and accept, take in. And so you've got your cup. Right, you are ready, right, you're sort of ready. The next card, um, right, is, where did she go? <laughs> right, after the page, we get the knight. 
So you're right, you're taking first steps towards this night. And it's interesting to me actually that we're not proceeding past that. The Queen and King of Cups has not come out here. It's kind of not, it's not about, you know, sort of emotional embodiment or, you know, management of emotions or clarity of emotions or anything, right? That isn't really what we're talking about. We're talking about the romance. Um, you know, someone who's, whose teachings I follow is, has talked about how, you know, one of our problems as a society, as, you know, humans, is that right, we can't have what we have. We refuse to allow ourselves to have what we have. Right? We lived in this, you know, paradisical space of, of the earth with beauty and so much. But it's not enough, right? It's like we're always seeking for something else. We don't allow ourselves to have. And I think that that Pisces energy does allow having this. And so that's right, what we're reaching for. Formal advice. Student of air. So not the knight of air, but the student to page. The willingness to uh, think about things differently, maybe take in new information. Um, and below that is this seven of wands. This koala seeming a little bit, right? He's got his wand, but he's a little, uh, do I want to leap down there? Yes. <laughs> and then below that is the scout of water, the knight of water in this deck. So this knight of cups energy is very important. You know, and kind of whatever that means to you. I think we, you know, we may all have different ideas of what we think magic is or looks like. Uh, you know, maybe you have no, you, you know, you're not connected to fairies. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's star energy that attracts you. Or, um, you know, elemental things whatever right whatever that is for you how you want to feel these things in your experience how you know what sort of world you want to walk around in and the bottom of the deck has this this five of pentacles and i often feel like this little monkey looks very hopeful you know it's like that poster from the X-Files. I want to believe. And next to that is the star. And here this, right, this frog is leaping. Leaping for the star. You leap towards the star. You don't hang around waiting for the star to show up. And so we have the Ace of Wands. Choosing, right? Choosing to act. Picking up the wand. Yeah. And then the Two of Cups. And this is, you know, this is kind of this re-enchantment um, this romance. And it may, you know, I think it's a romance with life. A romance with source, with the universe, with your whole environment. But it may also be a romance with a person. This reading could extend down to the particular of there being somebody you know, maybe you've been in a relationship for a long time or 
um, you know, maybe it's become very organized. <laughs> I often feel that way about, you know, sort of watching modern couples. You know, they have their lists and, you know, who does what and their schedules and they, you know, text one another and there's, um, you know, there seems, right, they have this partnership, they're right, the partners in life. And I just want to go, oh, you know, that's just, that seems, you know, like a, like the death of romance, the death of enchantment, the death of spontaneity that kind of brought you together, that, you know, feeling that you had in the very beginning. So maybe there's a re-enchantment there too. And then we get the fool, right? Of course, just go, have fun. Don't, right? Don't try to plan it in any way. Um, you know, I would say Gemini for you, don't try to collect every piece of information. Um, you know, this kind of isn't about going and researching you know, different kinds of occult practices and, you know, it's sort of, right, it's not about that. The, the specific details are not what's significant. It's, right, it's, it's, this is water, this is the Knight of Cups. This is feeling, this is being carried away by something. This is being quenched. And so we have this Six of Cups. Um, I think there's a sweetness to this. You know, and not, right, not childishness, but, but that enchantment of childhood. You know, when we're, when we're very little children, and I think that, that a sad thing is that children nowadays encounter the digital really early, and they start to you know, try and do these adult things, you know, and get into the digital sphere really early. So even, you know, kids like six, seven, but really little kids, two, three, who haven't, right, been disenchanted yet, right? They're still, you know, their, their actual brain waves are different, much more open. I think in touch with source in a way that, you know, kind of gets cut off for us. So to, right, to re-embrace that, and this time fully knowing, with a knowingness, that it's there, that we're not crazy, that this other layer is really there. And that we can experience it and live in it if we make that choice. And that we do need to make the choice kind of repeatedly because there is, you know, a lot of interference. So if this, right, if this sounds really good to you, right, does your body kind of go, oh, when I say the word enchantment and re enchantment? Explore it for yourself, Gemini. I wish you the very, very best, and I will see you next time so long.